What number? Oh. 169. At the Lamb's High Feast. Good evening. Today we celebrate the seventh Sunday of Easter. This Mass is celebrated for our parish family. Announcements. Public Masses at St. Boniface will resume on Saturday, May 30th, the vigil of the Feast of Pentecost. We will be on our summer schedule with Masses at 4 p.m. on Saturdays and 9 a.m. on Sundays. As we return to Mass, 50 people will be allowed in the church and a limited number in the parish hall. We must follow four key guidelines. Wear a face mask at all times, except when receiving Holy Communion. Maintain social distance, six feet apart. Use hand sanitizer when asked. And most importantly, if you feel sick, have been near someone who is sick or feel uncomfortable, please do not come to Mass. The obligation to attend Sunday Mass is still lifted for those 60 years or older and for all those with underlying health conditions. There is a brief, well done video about returning to church located on our website. We urge you to watch. We have reached 62% of our partners and charity goal for the parish. As of May 18, 42 parishioners have pledged $13,905. Donations are still being accepted and can be mailed directly to partners in charity at the Worcester Diocese or dropped off at the parish office. Checks should be made out to partners in charity. Thank you for your generosity. Please continue to check the parish website and your email for updates. Our opening hymn today is At the Lamb's High Feast. This evening, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. This weekend, we gather to celebrate the liturgy of the seventh Sunday of Easter. In order to offer a worthy prayer to the Lord this evening, let us call to mind our sins. Ask God for peace and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, your Virgin, all the angels and saints, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Savior of the human race is with you in your glory may experience as he promised until the end of the world his abiding presence among us who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem. From the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All those devoted themselves to one accord to prayer, together with some women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, 
Blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let no one among you be made to suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as an intriguer. But whoever is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed, but glorify God because of the name. The word of the Lord. gospel according to John. Jesus raised his eyes to, ev- to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your son, so that your son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all the people, so that your son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave out to the world. They belonged to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they accepted them and truly understood that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for those, for the ones you have given to me in the world, but they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I'm coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening once again. We have some good news. And again, I just say some. Next Saturday, great news we have. May the 30th and May the 31st, 4 p.m. on Saturday, we'll enter into a new phase here in our parish life during these uncertain times of the pandemic. We will, although in a limited way, begin our public masses, liturgies and gatherings in our parish. As I said, this is good news, even if it fills us still with a little bit of anxiety that it brings that the virus is still with us. During the last six to eight weeks, there are many things that have happened in our parish. We have been closed, but we have been very open. We have had many events, many liturgies that have come to you via the internet, many things that have been mailed to us at our homes. Many of you have written us various gracious notes and emails of encouragement, so I thank you all. Although the priest in a parish may be the face of what happens, There is a lot of people behind the scenes who are doing actually all the work 
So I want to thank them as we enter into this new phase. I'd like to thank Claire and Judith, our music team. I'd like to thank Jeremy, our videographer, Carla Capucci, Parish Connect, and the whole team. Robert DiGeronimo, who was behind everything. Website, the Knights of Columbus, the Women's Guild, Lucy and Anna, Regis Education, and of course, Joanne, our parish secretary, who have all, or who does always put everything together. There are five critical things that we need to know as we come back to church. The first one, the obligation is still lifted for Sunday Masses for all those who have underlying issues or are 60 years and older and uncomfortable gathering in this kind of setting in the church. Secondly, bring your mask and wear your mask at all times in church when we begin. The other, the other key guideline is to stay six feet apart. So as you prepare to come next weekend, we shall have the pews marked out that you remain six feet apart. Social distancing is very important. Use the hand sanitizer, come with it. And whenever we're going to ask you to use it, please use it. And lastly, which is most importantly for me, if you feel sick, you have been near somebody who is sick, you feel uncomfortable in these settings of coming to church, please stay at home. You know, we shall still have the online masses coming to you at home. Stay safe and keep others safe. So as I said again, we shall still have the online masses coming to you. Last Sunday, Father Bob Brusso at St. Cecilia's Parish celebrated 70 years of age. And reaching 70 was a big deal for him. It was one of the things on his bucket list because none in his family has ever reached the age 70. So it was a big deal for him. Father Bob has been struggling with a few, not even a few, a lot of uh, difficult health issues recently. A few priests and I got wind that the parishioners of St. Cecilia's we're organizing one of these birthday parade of cars around the rectory for him. And so we decided to join in. But we are all unready for the reaction that we would get when we went there. Some of us came from Worcester, some of them came from Worcester, myself, a few priests from, from Lemonstar, Lunenburg, some people from Gardner. How it was all organized, the good heart of the people really struck us as priests. And there was something more for me, something that I really saw in the people, and can be described in two words, two words that you want to see in the world today. And those two words for me are, I care, I care. For a priest who is having failing issues, the parishioners to say, we're going to lift you up in this time, I care. These words, when we put them into actions, must must and will always be the most important prayer that we can give to others in, in our communities, in our lives. I feel for me this is the most perfect prayer of solidarity that we need in our world today, reaching out to others, unity in suffering, charity in action. This summarizes the Christian life. The needs of others matter. Others matter in our lives. I care. And you care that it does, that they do matter. And for me, this spoke volumes about the people of this parish, St. Cecilia's. In these days of the pandemic, we have all come to figure out the things that really matter in our lives and the things that do not. We have all come to figure out quickly the things that we need to hold on to and the things that, frankly, we don't need to hold on to. We have found out painfully, rather painfully, that everything can and does stop. But what really matters in our lives? What is of true value? I think on my list, on all of us, on our priority list right now, that we are all writing in our own lives, the sense of being together really matters. Sense of family, sense of community, being together with our loved ones. We have come to know that the weakness and failures of others can quickly affect us all but also come to know that the strength of others and our strength, when we extend them to others, can make a difference in the lives of others. 
This experience is what it means to be a true follower of Christ. Can there ever be a perfect prayer? If there is any perfect prayer, it is what we heard in today's gospel. That we listen to Jesus saying, this is a prayer that all our prayers must look like. It's the prayer is centered on two things. The need of others involving others. The most repeated words in today's gospel are two. They and them. I have revealed your name to those who you sent me into the world. They belong to you. You gave them to me. They have kept your word. They know that everything that I give is from you. The words that you gave me, I gave to them. They accepted them. Truly they understood them that they come from you. I pray for them. I don't pray for those in the world, but for the ones that you gave me. They and them, Jesus repeats. A prayer for others, that others' needs matters. And so that is the prayer that we all must live with too in our own lives. Jesus' prayer must become our own prayer in our lives. It's a prayer of unity, love, and considering always the needs of others. This must be our manner of life. It is seven days to Pentecost. What will make us so ready for this gift of the Spirit to dwell into our lives, to our midst? What will open the floodgates of the Spirit to work in our lives? I just wrote down a few things for myself that maybe we can also share together this afternoon. Refuse looking out only for self. Others matter. Embrace an attitude of living, a manner of prayer that involves others. Care for others, the needs of others. Never be indifferent to the plight of others, especially the sick and the poor. And be ready even to suffer that the well-being of others may never be an overlooked. When you and I do this, we can confidently pray, Come, Holy Spirit, come. And he will. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith. For we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. He is adored and glorified. Who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look for a resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now lift up to the Lord some of our prayers and intentions. For the church, that knowing Christ has prayed for us, we may deepen our identity as children of God and be strengthened to carry on the mission of Christ each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewal of prayer in our lives, that God will draw us into a deeper relationship through our listening to Scripture and attention to God's action in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer because of their faith, 
that they may draw strength from Christ's promise to be always with us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a new outpouring of the Spirit upon the Christian community, that God will heal the wounds of the body of Christ, free us from fear, and unite us in mission and worship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders in every parish, that they may develop wise practices as public gatherings resume, and that many hearts may be open to assisting in the parish in new ways, so that everyone who comes to church may be safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, particularly those with COVID-19, that God's healing spirit will fill them, ease their pain, and restore them to wholeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the, all those who have died, especially remembering those this Memorial Day weekend that have sacrificed their lives for the peace and freedom that we enjoy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To conclude our prayer, the prayer of Mother Mary, as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Our song of preparation is Be Not Afraid. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety. Let us pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice at your hands. The praise and the glory of his name. For our good and good of all his church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness may pass over to the glory of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for, the, for our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, went into heaven, into the highest heavens, as the angels gazed in wonder, mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. He ascended not to distance himself, from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, even the heavenly powers, angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
And you are holy indeed, O Lord, the font of all life, all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed, entered willingly to his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his friends and disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup again, giving thanks and praise. He gave it to his friends and disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. story of faith. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate, for you are with us here, and we believe that we will see you when you as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring her the fullness of charity to the Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, or the clergy. Remember our family members, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy, welcome them now into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. The Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, Saint Boniface, our patron saints, all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be coherent to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant us peace in our families and in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin, Safe from all distress, as we await a blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us the peace, the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We show to one another a sign of peace.
Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion song is Bread of Life. Let us stand and pray. Hear us, O God our Savior, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole church what has already come to pass in Christ our head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Remain the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a good week, everyone. You too, Father. Our closing hymn is America the Beautiful. <laughs>